Well, our final speaker for this session is Andy Baker. Uh, Andy is a biostatistic PhD student at the University of Minnesota. His research interests are uh, clustering, uh, causal analysis, and developing the statistical uh, methods for time use data. He has managed uh, uh, two major dynamica based studies, uh, the most recent of which was the COVID travel impact study taking place in the spring of 2021. This COVID uh, travel impact study sought to understand the impact of COVID on the individual's time use and activity patterns. He will share with us his research findings in the following presentation titled The Causal Effect of uh, Pre-Existing Conditions During the COVID-19 Pandemic on Time Use, Social con Context, and the Emotional Well-Beings. Andy. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to be presenting on um, the causal effects of pre-existing conditions during the COVID-19 pandemic on time use and emotional well-being. That's basically a long-winded way of saying that we're gonna be looking at individuals during the COVID-19 pandemic, specifically those who had pre-existing conditions, how were their time use and how was emotion well-being, how, how were those types of things affected in comparison to those who did not have pre-existing conditions. So the data that we'll be talking about came from the COVID-19 travel impact study. This was a study where we collected data from um, 250 individuals. We enrolled 350, 250 ended up beginning data collection, and 150 individuals completed data collection. This occurred during the spring of 2021. During that time, we were able to collect around 40,000 activities and trips. Um, across 4,300 user days. Aside, alongside that, we had more of an active data collection role than um, what Julian presented on previously, um, where we had 22,000 activity and trip surveys that were collected and, and 3,000 end of day surveys. So this was a much more active um, data collection study than some of the other ones. The specific presentation objectives that we're going to be covering today are, as I've mentioned before, assessing the causal effect of having a pre-existing condition during the COVID-19 pandemic on a collection of metrics. The metrics that we're going to be specifically looking at are two time use ones, so the first one being aggregated daily summaries, so these are just looking at on the day level, what did you do that day? Uh, then another one, another time use metric related to the specific time of day effects on engaging in activities and trips. So how does time of day interact with what you're doing? And well, then finally, we'll do just a little bit of an analysis related to subjective well-being. So looking at the average happiness and stress levels when engaging in activities and trips. So it should be acknowledged here that these first two time use ones, these types of analyses can be done with any Dynamica study. So these are not study specific, it just uses the core Dynamica functionality in that data for the analysis. And um, only the subjective well-being analysis was specific to this study, but it's a very common data point that many Dynamica studies collect data on. So I've mentioned causal analysis and causal methods a couple times now, just to kind of um, explain what we mean by that. We're gonna be specifically looking at two different causal estimation methods, inverse probability weighting and propensity score stratifications. These are just ways in which we can account for the fact that this is an observational study, so we can't um, do a randomized trial where we assign who has a pre-existing condition. We need to just look in the population, see who has them, and then adjust for the various confounders. Um, that are related to whether you have a pre-existing condition and also related to the outcomes that we're interested in. The specific confounders that we adjusted for in these analyses are gender, employment status, age, education, income, whether you rent or own your home, and race. Alongside the causal estimates, we're also presenting confidence intervals, which are constructed via bootstrap resampling. So the first metric that we're gonna be looking at, um, which is an aggregate daily level metric, it, are activity chains. These are unique summaries of the sequential ordering of what you do throughout the day. So in this figure up here, we have a graphical visualization of what Dynamica collects. This is only for a 12 hour period, but you can see that you have home, work, shop and eat out, and then you go home again as the unique listing of activities that you engaged in. 
In this case, an activity chain is simply listing the unique orders of activities that you engaged in. So this, all of this data that is collected by Dynamic and can be summarized on the day level as HSOH, which is a relabeling of um, the fact that you were at home, you went to work, you were out and about, and then you went back home again. So basically we're gonna be looking at, can we look at these unique sequential orderings of your days and find interesting um, insights about how people spend their time throughout the day. It should be noted that these activity chains ignore the actual duration of activities, so um, you can do alternative analyses to incorporate the actual duration, but for this one, we're just ignoring how long you actually spent in those activities specifically. These are two visualizations that allow you to actually look at the sequential nature of the um, activity chains across an entire population. So the one on the left is for the individuals who had pre-existing conditions. The one on the right is who did not, those who did not have pre-existing conditions. Um, these are pretty dense plots in terms of all of the information that they contain. But the key thing to note here is that the plots look very similar between the two subgroups. So this would be considered an unadjusted analysis. And the key thing being that there really aren't major differences between them in terms of how people spent their time in and the sequential ordering for the activities that they engaged in throughout a day. Looking at specific um, activity chains and their relative frequencies in the populations, we can see that these are the 10 most popular activity chains. So spending your entire day at home was the most frequent in both population groups with, you know, on average about 30% of the days being spent just at home for the data that we collected and the rightmost column has the inverse probability weighted causal difference in terms of the relative frequency. Um, so this basically evaluates for those who had pre-existing conditions, were they more likely or less likely to have a specific activity chain? The key finding here is that in general, all of the causal differences are very close to zero and the confidence intervals are quite large and contain zero, indicating that there is no significant causal difference between the two subpopulations of interest. This is kind of a nice finding for us um, in the sense that not having significant differences means that the, the vulnerable population, the individuals with pre-existing conditions, they were not adversely affected in terms of the sequential ordering in which they engaged in their activities and activities throughout the day. So they, you know, they had the same number of activities and the actual order in which they went about those activities was um, not significantly different compared to those with pre-existing conditions. Moving on to the second metric, another time of day, a time use metric related to um, the time of day probability analysis. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at evaluating how the probability of engaging in activities is affected by the time of day. So this is a pretty complicated figure, so just to orient yourself, um, the, we have stratified the data based on whether it came from weekdays or weekends, so those are the different rows, the top row being weekdays, bottom row being weekends. The columns refer to the data set um, or the subset of data, so the leftmost being individuals with pre-existing conditions, the middle one being no pre-existing conditions, and the rightmost being the causal difference between the two populations. Within each panel, we have a collection of line plots. The x-axis refers to the time of day. The y-axis refers to the probability of engaging in a specific activity or trip. And then the line color is that specific activity or trip type. So green refers to home, blue refers to work, purple out and about, and then red is engaging in a trip. Um, looking at the upper left, this is probably the easiest to explain. We can see that the green lines, the green line refers to the probability of being at home, specifically for weekdays with those who have pre-existing conditions. And we see a pretty um, interpretable plot in the sense that the probability of being at home is quite high in the early mornings and the late evenings. And then we have this almost bathtub effect where it drops quite precipitously in the early, in the you know, um, work hours, then it starts to rise again in the evening hours, and then we have this plateau effect of the probability of being at home being relatively stagnant. 
We similar have it, a upside down bathtub effect going on with the work where we have a commensurate rise to the decrease in the probability of being at home and then kind of a leveling out during the standard work hours and then a drop again. The key thing when interpreting these plots is the fact that the leftmost column and the middle column, the plots actually look relatively similar. This is represented in the rightmost column in which we look at the specific differences in the probabilities. In this case, the lines are all centered around zero. It's really even hard to actually interpret the lines because they all overlap with each other. And the confidence intervals, the dashed lines, almost all of them at all time points contain zero, which tell us that the specific effect of time of day does not seem to be, um, there does not seem to be a statistically significant difference between these populations as well. So the previous results related to the activities chains show that the sequential ordering of the data of the activities that you engage in, there was not a significant difference for our population of interest, the, those with pre-existing conditions. And likewise, we see that for the specific time of day in which you engage with your activities and trips, that also does not seem to have a, um, there does not seem to be a significant difference between these populations. So again, this is kind of a promising result. This is kind of nice to see that for our um, vulnerable population, we're not seeing significant differences. Finally, the last analysis that we'll do, um, we'll just specifically looking at how to evaluate the mean happiness and stress level based on the activity types. These plots are formatted relatively similarly to the previous one. In this case, um, the rows refer to stratification based on gender, so it's um, whether they identify it as a man or a woman or non-binary. The columns are the exact same as previously, and then within each panel we have um, point estimates alongside their confidence intervals stratified by whether it's all data, whether it's a home activity, out and about activity, or work activity, along with trips. And the key findings here are that when we look at the confidence intervals and the point estimates, there does not seem to be a statistically significant difference in terms of the mean happiness level for this population. Aside from men who had, um, for work activities, our data indicated that um, having a pre-existing condition resulted in significantly happier average happiness levels during work activities. This is, um, Unexpected, we did not see, I don't really have a clear reason why this is occurring, um, but it should be noted that we are not adjusting for multiple comparisons here, so we do have, you know, 10 confidence intervals, so technically we should probably have a little bit wider confidence intervals here as well. Moving on to the stress level, it's, um, or the plots are structured the exact same as before. In this case, there's only one instance in which we have statistical significance based on that right column, and that's for women in which having a pre-existing condition resulted in significantly more stress level, stressful trips on average, um, but the remainder are, of the confidence intervals are not significant because they contain zero. Um, but again, as I mentioned before, we are not adjusting for multiple comparisons, so take the significance with a grain of salt here as well. So just to conclude and kind of summarize what we had here, the causal effects of having pre-existing conditions versus no pre-existing conditions during the COVID-19 pandemic was minimal and rarely statistically significant. This is one of the few times as a statistician where I'm quite happy to not see statistical significance because it means that our vulnerable subpopulation was not adversely affected over how the entire community was in general. It should be noted that um, alternative treatments may indicate new causal differences. So we specifically looked at those who had pre-existing conditions, but this type of analysis, specifically the time use ones, can be performed for any type of subgroup that you're interested in with the proper confounding, ad adjusting for the proper confounders. So whether you're interested in looking at the effects of gender or race or education or income level, any of those types of things can also be applied for these types of analysis methods. And I will also note that previous work um, explored the co specific causal effects of COVID-19 across entire populations. So we used historical Dynamica data collected from a previous study. And then we looked at the effects on the entire population of COVID-19 on the various time use factors. 
But with that, we'll end the presentation, and I'm happy to take any questions people have. Thank you, Andy, Andy for that interesting uh, presentation. Any questions from the audience? Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, and I love your uh, contribution to your data collection. Uh, but uh, the result uh, was a little bit uh, uh, depressed for, for me. So, uh, because uh, I think uh, you choose uh, some uh, comparison between uh, COVID-19 and and. and uh, before that, so um, the uh, it's a kind of binary uh, comparison. Um, but uh, as we know, uh, uh, during the COVID-19, the phase of COVID-19 is very uh, different uh, from early 2020 and 2021. So I think uh, you com why don't you compare the um, the different phases in COVID-19. So. Yeah, that's a that's an excellent point. The fact that you know the if you were to do this analysis, um, you need to take you need to contextualize in the the different phases of the COVID-19 pandemic. I will say that this data was collected only during a three-month period in the spring of 2021. So we should probably contextualize it in terms of what was going on during that time period, but it was not during you know a year and a half where we need to do that adjustment. So we should contextualize the results in that time period, but I think, I feel pretty confident in saying that during that three month period, it was probably relatively um, stable in terms of the effects or what was going on in the pandemic. Wonderful, any other questions? Well, if not, then let's give our Indian hands.